Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest on the SharePoint online branding. So what are the all cool things uh, you can do or adjust in SharePoint online sites to make it more personalized and make it dependent on a company brand, which is quite important thing for global intranets. Well, not global intranets only for all of the intranets, right? And all of the sites even, uh, it's it's an important thing. Now with me is the owner of all of these features from a PM site, uh, Kathy. Do can you do a quick intro um, on your responsibilities? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Faisa. So like Faisa said, I'm Kathy Dew. I'm a product manager here in the OneDrive and SharePoint team focused on the SharePoint site space, um, which is a lot of those core components like branding, the headers, the footers, the navigation, the logos, the colors, um, how things work consistently across SharePoint um, and how a lot of that extends into view the connections um, and how a lot of this kind of goes into different spaces, into teams and different places. So um, it's great to have a great time to come and chat with you all today. Now, while we haven't done a lot of new things in this space, we wanted to take some time to highlight a couple of small changes that have happened and give you some quick run through of just a quick reminder and some run through of some of the different new and, and things that you can do to customize and change things up. Sounds really good. Let's let's have a look on that in practice because the branding is all about visualization and how we can adjust the site. Yeah. So thanks, Faisa. Again, like I said, wanted to take a time to jump in and talk about some of the great customizations that you can do, some of the different ways that you can customize sites today. We're going to take a look into um, Bonnie's Garden, which is a community site here for ReliCloud, um, a great community program that we've built up a great site for. Highly customized. You can see different colors, different ways to make this site really jump out. So I wanted to take some time just to go through what can you do, what can't you do. So first, let's start at the very top because as we go through and we work on our sites, that's usually where we start. So the very first thing is looking at, we've got a custom logo here. Now in the past, you could change the logo by going to both site information and change the look. This is one change that we have made, which is we've made it simpler. We've simplified this and we've centralized the location for site logo management into change the look. So if you were to come now into site information to change the look of the site logo, you're going to see a banner here that's going to direct you into change the look to edit your site logo. So just making it easier. Now, instead of thinking you may have two places to go, you really have a single location to go to customize the look and feel of your SharePoint site. So with that, let's jump right in to change the look and talk about what can we do. So here I'm on a team site. So you may notice that some of my options and change the look are smaller. I have theme, header, and navigation. So in here, you may think, oh, this is uh, missing a couple of things. I'm missing the footer. The footer is not currently available for team sites, so you don't have that available. But let's jump in and see what we do have available. So we do have our themes. So with our themes, remember, we have a set of out-of-the-box themes that Microsoft provides for you. These are our SharePoint themes down at the bottom. And then if you've created custom company themes that have been installed for your tenant, those are going to show up here in our company themes. So here you can can see I have two custom company themes installed of ReliCloud and ReliCloud Marketing, and then I have a, a current selection for my site that's been utilized. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with that current selection because that is the theme that I've already built the site for, but you can see there's a lot of different options here that you can utilize. And if you're really focused on your company brand, make sure that you're creating those themes and you can utilize aka.ms slash theme designer to try out and build out those custom themes, export out the PowerShell that you would need to install those company themes to have them show up in the company themes section. And you can find a lot of great documentation in our documentation sites for that. So you can go through and utilize that and create great custom themes. You can have those company brands right there and available for everyone to choose. So now let's go back and look at our header. 
with our site headers, we have four different header layout options. When we create our sites by default, it uses the compact header. So we can utilize that. But for this site, we really want to give it a little bit of pizzazz. We want to make it really stand out. So we're going to go ahead and switch to the extended header. When I switch to the extended header, you're going to notice a couple of things happen. You're going to see the logo changed because I had a much larger logo that I was actually utilizing. And then I'm going to put in a different header image here. And you're going to see that show up. So I'm able to utilize a header image for the background of this site header that utilizes some different colors. We've got some great recommendations for how to do these headers and a great blog post out on our community site and the tech community. And you can see lots of different options for how to do this. So you can see it starts to give you a lot more customization here. And on the extended header, we get a larger site logo. So you can see I've customized that logo, I've made it larger, and I've changed the alignment of it. I I could have picked to have it to the left, to the right. In this particular case, I did choose to have it centered. So you can do that. So there's two site logos here, and I just want to highlight why there's two. There are two site logos here because the site logo thumbnail is that square th logo thumbnail that shows up in our my sites, when we look at that app bar and we see those highlighted logos that show up, as well if you search for a site, all of those different locations that utilize a square logo construct. So you're able to now customize how your site logo shows up when it's in that aspect instead of us taking your logo and squishing it down to make it fit in that square. Because as you can see, this is a very long rectangular logo. Logo. It would not look right if we tried to crop it or we tried to make it into a square. It's going to be very small and unrecognizable. So we've given you the control of how you want your site logo to show up in those searches, in those different places where we need that square aspect to show up. So that's why we highly encourage you to utilize the site logo thumbnail and the site logo. Only the site logo thumbnail is required. You can leave the default, so it will be what shows up. That's as you see it here. So let's jump into our last option, which is our navigation. Now, we're on a team site, so this is another great advancement. You'll notice here that on this particular team site, if you haven't seen this yet, we did switch the navigation switcher. So you are able to now choose between left side vertical navigation or horizontal navigation on a team site. And so it's really exciting to be able to take our team sites and have that horizontal navigation be a component of it. So it truly transforms the look of our team sites beyond what we had before. So really giving us a lot of great complexity in our team sites to be able to take them from left navigation, that vertical navigation to the horizontal navigation. So those are just a few things when it comes to branding that we can highlight a couple of changes with moving the site logo out of site information to only and exclusively into the change the look in the header location, and then also adding in the navigation switcher into team sites and change the look as well. So giving you a few more options to customize the way that your site looks and giving you a little bit more flexibility. So a lot of great things with branding, a lot of easy ways to customize how your sites look. Excellent. Really, really cool stuff and a lot of lot of changes um, on this side as well. And I, I love the fact that it's such a classic request on a team site. Can I get the navigation from a left to top rather than so I created a team site should have been a communication site. How do I now make it look like a communication site? Because it's a bit confusing. So that's a great, great, great feature for sure. Um, anything what you we can talk about what's happening in the future? Are we still investing on new options and capabilities and making things even more adjustable? Yeah, definitely. We're still looking at different ways to make things more adjustable. Um, I would say a lot of the new investments are going to come into the pages world with more customization options in the web parts. So really be looking at how that will come about. You may have seen some of our section layout templates come out um, and more customization options into web parts themselves. So kind of moving it beyond the 
overall site, but down into the content that you're creating. Um, you could yeah. see that already with on, on communication sites with the full width um, layout sections and being able to use those full width pages. Um, sections and web parts. So you'll see more customization and options coming into the web parts and the pages themselves um, yep. rather than the holistic brand options. And one question which I also needed to ask as an old SharePoint person, well, not old, but you know, been around for a while. Uh, so um, how can I enforce some of this stuff? Is there a way for me, for example, the theming is a good example. Um, is there a way for me to make sure that in all of the sites within my tenant, the theme color would be aligned on the same the same um, setting? Um, might be out of scope of this video precisely, but is there a way to do that? There absolutely is. You can actually use site templates to do that. So you can have a custom site template that you create that can run on all of your sites that the only thing it does is to apply your company theme. And so you can create site templates to apply themes and have that run on any type of site out there, whether it be team site, communication site, teams connected site, channel site, to enforce your company brand theme colors. And so that's a great way to kind of of do that work and it yeah. can be run programmatically it isn't something that someone has to go apply and so it's great to know that you can build something like a template a site template to do that small of a function but it's really hugely impactful from that company brand perspective and you can also use that to do things like logos and and other pieces as well but from a brand perspective for getting your colors set you could do that as well as you can restrict um theme colors that are available through powershell yeah and and especially just reiterating what we were just saying and that you can actually create this default site template so regardless where the site is actually getting created regardless which template the end user selected it's always going to be applied behind the scenes as the on top of all of the else oh and here's the enforcement which is basically the theming and, and logo and if that's what you want to restrict because again um, this is such a very variety of different size customers so maybe a customer with 10, 20 customer 20 uh, employees the objectives are different than for a customer with 200,000 employees but but again all options are available absolutely trying to keep cool. things flexible Exactly, exactly. It's it's a bit hard, of course, for the whole scale, but um, it's looking really, it's, really it's good. It's hard. So. This is such a it's such an impactful space when it comes to branding. Everyone wants to be able to apply creativity, but at the same time, in many organizations, it is such an impactful piece of needing to have some type of control and consistency. Um, and you know, there have been a lot of studies over the years of different organizations of largeness and security and concerns about people that just identify more with the content if it's branded appropriately. And so in some places, it's just a must have necessity to be yeah. able to brand it appropriately. And so that's why we try to provide the large variety of you know, methods that you can use to customize and configure, whether it is um, you can do anything to where it to where it is more of a constricted, you know, optimized for those um, restricted organizations. So we try to make it uh, flexible, uh, but that is a very complex situation to work in. Cool. Really, really awesome stuff. And thank you for the for joining uh, on this video, Kathy. Uh, awesome to hear the latest. And, and we'll certainly follow up on there's always so much new on the branding areas. When when there's another new feature, we'll catch you uh, do another video um, for us. Thank you.